overflows. Anhat nad, the subtle flow. Anhat nad is subtle flow of existential energy. The moment you start merging into it, a new meaning arises. Life is constantly rivering, just rivering. Rivering is its nature. Anhadnad is the nature of the existence to flow. Mind can infer why is river flowing? Why is existence creating this nod? Wind blows, simply blows waving. Birds float in the sky. Bhati havaon ka na koi maskan na koi gaon hota hai. A flowing wind has no destination, no village, no place to go. The birds flowing in the sky have no destination. Without any destination, wind flows rhythmically. Without any destination, Flowing rhythmically is nature. Life, each moment flows rhythmically as musical symphony. Live each moment, therefore, flowing rhythmically as musical symphony. You will understand, you will flow with this nod this uncreated sound that is the pulse of the cosmos a new meaning will arise do not make anything a goal not even sex let it be the flow along the current that flowing is blissful just bliss rejoice a play of innocence freedom and spontaneity. This is Anhat Nath in a way. I have heard a student came to, a, to an old sage. The student said, if you can forgive me, Master, I want to relate to you something about myself. I have become an atheist. Now I do not believe in God. So the old sage asked, For how long, for how many days have you been studying scriptures? For how many days? So the man, the seeker, the student said, Near about 20 years I have been studying the Vedas, the scriptures. So the old man sighed and said, Just twenty years? And you have nerve to say that you have become an atheist? The student was puzzled. What was the old man saying? So he said, I am puzzled. What are you saying? You make me more confused than when I came here, the old man said, Go on studying the Vedas, the scriptures. In the beginning one says God is. In the beginning one says God is. Only in the end does one say God is not. To become an atheist, you have to travel much into theism. You have to go to the very core of, the, of theism. God is at the beginning. God is not at the end. Do not be in a hurry. The student was even more puzzled. 
God is and God is not has been uttered by those who know those who know God is and God is not in the beginning the journey of theism begins with God is and it must end is end and God is not this is not a theism as you know God is God is is uttered by those who do not know God is is uttered by those who do not know God is not is uttered by those who do not know those who know they utter both simultaneously those who know if you have known understood the scripture of life you will not use one god is or god is not you will use god is god is not he is he is not you know the life is a balance between opposites contradictions a scripture is a balance between contradictions god is and god is not this is the scripture anhat nat is a contradictory statement but used with deep consideration deep understanding it is meaningful it says that the phenomena is felt as a sound and is not a sound it says the phenomena is felt as a sound but it is not a sound it is felt as a sound because you only feel sounds you do not know any other language you know only the language of sounds that is why it is felt as sound but it is the silence it is the silence the no sound the soundlessness of cosmos and the question further seeks explanation in which way the state of soundlessness can be equal to total soundlessness it is always so the zero and absolute zero mean the same thing zero you know but absolute zero you do not know for example if i have a jar which is completely empty and i have another jar which is completely filled both are complete one is completely empty isn't it so and another is completely filled filled to the brim both are complete isn't it both are complete both are perfect if the jar is half filled it is half filled and half empty you can call it half empty or half filled but whether it is completely empty or completely filled one thing is common to both Com completeness completeness one is completely empty the other is completely full soundlessness is complete you cannot do anything more to make it more soundless understand this the cup that is empty you cannot do anything to make it completely empty or add anything to its emptiness and can you add anything to the cup that is full to the brim that too is impossible so what is the focus on the completeness completely empty 
we use the phrase but unknowingly, completely empty and completely full. So that emphasis should be on complete. Soundlessness is complete because nothing can be added to it. You cannot do anything more to make it more soundless. Understand this. This is complete. Nothing can be done or added. You have come to a point beyond which there is no movement possible. No movement possible. And if the sound is total, you cannot add anything to it. You cannot add anything to it. You have come to another limit. You cannot go beyond it. It is common. And this is what is meant. One can say it is soundlessness because no sound is heard. Everything has become absent. You cannot take anything further from it. Can you take out anything from emptiness or can you add anything to the empty cup? Can you take out anything from an empty cup to make it empty or add anything to it to make it more empty? Or can you add anything to the cup that is full to make it full or take out anything to make it full? It is as it is. It is complete. When life becomes complete, it is complete from one side and empty on the other side. It is complete of divinity and, and complete of worldly absence. The absence of the world is complete and fullness of the divinity is complete. It is complete. So you can say it is completely, it is a complete sound, a full sound, absolute sound. Again, nothing can be added to it. But in both cases, the indication is for perfection, absoluteness, wholeness. It depends on the mind. There are two types of minds, two types of expressions. For example, you ask Buddha, what will happen in deep meditation when one attains to samadhi? What will happen? He will say, there is no sorrow, there is no pain, there is no suffering. We will never say there is, will be, he will never say there will be bliss. He will simply say there will be no pain, just painlessness. You ask Shankar, he will never say, about pain he will simply say there will be bliss absolute bliss so the totality of pain is there and both are expressing the same experience buddha says no pain refers to the world he says all pains have known are not there and whatsoever is there i cannot relate it in your language. Shankar says there is bliss, absolute bliss. He will never talk about the world and its pains. He will not, he is not referring to your world. He is referring to the experience itself. He is positive. Buddha is negative. But their indications are towards the same moon. Their fingers are different. But the fingers are pointing or indicating to the same moon. Enough for now.